Good morning, everybody. So I thought this morning I would give you another example of what life is really like on the homestead. Um, I may do a few cuts from scene to scene as we go, depending on what I'll end up videoing, because this is a long process to get ready every morning. Um, I've already gone out to Spark and I had one shop and deliver this morning. So that will be going into my payments to use for bills at the house, feed for the animals or other things that we might need. So my first step, because we ate so late last night and we were exhausted, is to put things like my mortal and pestle that I used to grind the rosemary I grew and dehydrated with last night to put in the buttermilk biscuits that I made using our own buttermilk. But all of these dishes have to be put away and this cabinet cleaned up before I can even start on any of the homestead chores or the things that I need to do today because my kitchen is super tiny and I have to have space to work. I have one decent sized cabinet, I will call it. And then I have a super tiny cabinet beside my stove. Um, normally this pot goes down into the basement because there is no room up here to actually keep it. But in the meantime, I am just going to set it right here off to the side. Um, I'm going to attempt to swing around with you so I can put the dishes away. If you're wondering why I don't have cabinet doors, whoops, that's what I get for trying to hold this camera and trying to do this. Um, if you're wondering why I don't have cabinet doors on my cabinets, it is because they are in the garage where they have been for a while trying to get redone so I can have some really pretty cabinets. If you're wondering about these dishes, um, I have, I'm not going to be able to get these out without breaking them. Um, let me set this down. Let me just set this down here and, okay, so I like pretty dishes. We have this one, which is one of our Halloween ones. Um, these just don't want to come out. I got them in there, obviously, so they will come out. Um, a Hello Kitty Fall that I thought was super cute. And so let me start with the back. I have a Hello Kitty Halloween, and then I have, like you saw, just the plain white Corel, which is our everyday dishes. Those are really old Corel dishes that actually came with the house when we bought the house. So, I have a lot of my utensils behind me on this wall. This house was built in 1935. So, everything is really close together, and literally the wall is right behind me. So, it's been a lot of fun trying to figure out how to arrange this kitchen, how to get everything that I use on a regular basis accessible. And... The stuff that I very, very seldom use is on the top. But it's stuff that I felt like, well, I might use and, you know, for the barbecue grill or whatever, we don't get a lot of time to grill out anymore. So it's stuff that I did want to keep and not just donate or give to somebody. Okay, so now I'm going to move my dish strainer over here. I'm going to attempt to set this up top here. Um, I th that doesn't feel very stable. I'm going to move this to 
These are ball jar lids because I use a ton of lids. My little towel that hangs back here on the towel rack. Um, I use a ton of the plastic ball jar lids for various, I'm gonna take this over to the stove and put these utensils away. Um, various things that I keep in the ball jars. When I open a ball jar, I go ahead and use a plastic lid instead of reusing the metal lids that it might come with. Um, uh, I don't know why that's such a mess over here. Um, this is one of my hanging drying baskets for my herbs. And then we're gonna go back over here and I'm going to help make the wash water for the goats. Um, this is the dish detergent that I use. And I always make them a warm bucket of water so that I can wash their teats with it. Okay, that should be good. I am going to slide my cream separator over here. Um, I don't know if you guys could see that. I'm going to slide it over here and start getting it set up so that when I come in the house um, for milking, I will pasteurize using my Instant Pot because it's a whole lot faster and it works great. I already have my Instant Pot set up here and I have my milk bucket ready to go. My herb drying rack does double as storage for dried herbs or whatever it is that I might need to put within quick reach. Oh yeah, I need to get keys. I almost forgot Jeff wasn't here this morning. So we need to get the barn keys so that I can let everyone out. Um, clearly my kitty litter box for the kitten we rescued is gonna need changed. But I need, I really need to get to the barn and get these goats milked, get the pigs fed and watered, get the poultry out and get everybody situated for their day because I'm running further behind than what I intended to this morning. But that's how it goes. Um, I'm just working so late trying to do things and then trying to get supper going that it is really, really hard to get up and get going at six in the morning. And I know Jeff is doing it, but he also goes to bed earlier in the night sometimes um, than what I do. Not always. Sometimes he stays up and takes care of the dishes or whatever. Um, let's see here. I need to get the barn unlocked. If you're wondering why we locked the barn, the reason is because people seem to have some idea that they can just walk on the land and do whatever it is that they want to do. Okay, I had to turn all of that off for a second, sorry. Um, I wanted to be sure that I shut the radio off. We do leave a radio going in the barn for the animals. And good morning, doties. Good morning, poultries. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is let me find a place to set the camera down okay so the first thing that i need to do is get their feet out and i give them approximately two pounds of feed that's, that's not quite enough sometimes they don't eat at all and that's fine but I would rather give them extra and then adjust it at the next feeding than to not give them enough. There's no way I can show you 
Let me see if I can move this now. No, I'm not going to be able to show you inside their actual dishes while I'm filling it. I give them one cup each of sunflower seed. Um, this is from Molly's Herbals. It is a Mo Milk Dietary Supplement. They get a tablespoon of this each. Um, just right there on top of the dishes. It always smells so good. Um, I normally throw in, this is what I've been giving them. This is vanilla flavored. They really like it. I just take a little bit like that and throw it in each dish. And then we have to put over. Okay, let me put that back so I have it. Okay, so I'm going to move over here because I have to get in this uh, trash can. We use the metal trash cans to keep critters out. So, I want to get them just a little dicotomaceous earth, and literally, I just, I really wanted you guys to see this. I just sprinkle it in like salt and pepper. Like I said, I'm sorry, there's not, there's not a real good way to do this. And then I get help. Both of these are from New Country Organics. I do order the organic kelp. And again, I just sprinkle that in like salt and pepper. Everybody is coming to go outside. Okay, so this is what... I don't suppose you can see. This is kind of what their feed looks like. Again, I'm sorry. I know this video is not ideal. And I hope you guys will just understand that I'm here doing this by myself and life is not always perfect on the homestead. So next, we're going to go over here. I see Velveteen. Hi, Velveteen. Okay, I see Velveteen popping up. You ready, Velveteen? Uh, Bailey's is there too. Bo ba Bailey's, let Velveteen come. Come on, Velveteen. Okay. Oh, we have all the goats at the door because they know that Velveteen and Bailey's are going to eat. And we do not feed the male goats grain. The reason we don't do this is because it can actually cause them problems uh, and actually cause them to die. So, if you do feed your male goats grain, you need to make sure you get the proper supplement. Sorry, guys, again. Um, you need to make sure you get the proper supplement so that your male goats are going to be okay. Okay, so this is Velveteen's Udder. I have not milked since yesterday because I am starting to dry them off a little bit. Um, I'm wanting to go to one time a day milking. The reason for this is I'm running out of room in the freezer. I'm running out of goat milk products that I can make. We are not going through this much milk. And just to be truthful with you, I need to get myself back to work so that our winter bills and their feed bills and everything can be taken care of. Oops, I forgot to get the, I forgot to get the udder balm and the teat spray. I do make the teat spray myself. Sometimes I make the udder balm myself. Sometimes I order from Molly's Herbals. Okay, so here we go. Now, feet down, feet down. I did have to use um, 
a goat hobble with her initially because she is a first time freshener and she likes to kick. So I have been working with her using the goat hobble to teach her that she just, she can't kick. She has to stand and let me milk her. I have also used a milking machine, which is great in a lot of ways, but I think it's an awful lot of cleanup. And given that I only have two goats in milk, I just feel like, you know, let's milk my hand. I think she has one of the nicest udders of any of the goats that I've ever owned. And she certainly does produce a lot of milk. She had twins this year. Um, we just sold the babies off a couple weeks ago. She had two, Bailey's had one. So, I will be back with the next thing that I do as soon as I get her milked. Okay, so I thought I'd come back on and show you how I finish the goats after I'm done milking. I again get this clean, warm wash water. And I, I know she's off to the side here. Um, I wash their teats off. Take a little bit of my salve. I know some people use other balm. Like I said, I prefer a salve. I always, whether I buy it or make it, I like it to have comfrey in it. Um, I rub it on my hands the best I can. And then I just go, I go up. I get it on the teats. I, I am spreading it to the front of the udder. And I also want to get the sides. Of course, then wiping my hands off a little bit. Um, and then I take the spray, uh, the goat teat spray recipe, as well as the salve recipe is on my website, experimentalhomesteader.com. And I spray, and what this does, this helps to, the one is because of how she's standing, it's actually easier for me to see from the back. Um, this helps to seal their teats. This takes the place of the general iodine that a lot of goat people use. And you can see, you can see the difference in her teats. So anyway, this is Velveteen. Um, do you want to come out and say hi, Velveteen? Come on. <clears throat> Do you want to turn around and say hi? No? Okay, she's going to kick. Oh, goodness. She is going to kick the milk, kick the camera. Ah, okay. I should have grabbed the milk bucket first. You want to say hi, Velveteen? You want to say hi? Hi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've been watching you get milked, baby. You ready to go back in? Okay, I think she's ready to go back in. And I'm ready to put her back in and bring Bailey's up. Okay, let's see how well this transition goes. Um, just a minute, I have to unlatch it. You know that chops are not coming out. Come on, Bailey's. Come on, Velveteen. Okay. Oh. Okay, come on. I gotta get her feed bucket. Come on, Bailey's. Bailey's is a little bit, she's my character goat. Um, I put it all in there. She's my character goat. If it's gonna happen and it's gonna be chaotic, it's gonna be her. But, oh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, there she is ready to go and I will show you her udder. She only has one this year. Um, I was working 16 hour days last year trying to get the bills paid. And so I feel like this is completely my fault, but we have had her seen by the vet and he says it will remedy it himself. I thought the baby she had on her would take care of the milk and we would not have a problem. Clearly, I was wrong. I was just very wrong because we had a problem this year. I like the vet said, luckily she only had the one baby. So everything was okay. 
Bailey's is a fantastic milker. Um, she stands well. She lets me milk her well. And I am amazed at how much milk I actually get from just the one teat. So if we had, if she had both of her teats this year, I don't think this gallon bucket would be enough to do the milking with. I think I would have to milk one and take it inside and then come back and milk her. But, or get a bigger bucket. I could get a bigger bucket. Um, but these stainless steel milking buckets are pretty pricey. At least they were 20 years ago when I bought this one. So that's why I just deal with it and try to figure something out. And luckily this bucket has held this year. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, guys, you're going to be going out soon. Um, is a lot of people think goat milk has an off taste. My goat milk tastes just like cow's milk. It is absolutely in how clean your barn is. It is how you process the milk after you do the milking. You know, it's about cleanliness because if everything is not clean, if everything is not done proper, that's where you get that goaty off taste. I won't say that I've never had that because I have certainly got in a hurry. I have gone inside. I have not chilled the milk properly. I've just kind of tossed it in the refrigerator and had a slight off taste, not bad, um, but a slight off taste and I don't like the off taste. So I ended up giving that to the pigs because they don't care either way. Um, so, okay, I'm going to get off here and finish smoking her, and then I will come back when it's time to let the poultry out. Okay, so I'm going to get Bailey's off the stand. Um, the wash water, I always use it to rinse my stand off with, to try to keep my stand as clean as possible. Again, we are in a barn. There are cobwebs and dust and all the things. Sometimes I have to lure her back here. Come here, Bailey's. Bailey's. Hey, you want some more treat? Come on. Bailey's. No. Oh, geez. Okay, she has gone down into the front of the stand. She is going to have to back herself up because there's no way to move the stand and get her out. Come on, Bailey. No, you can't go forward. Hey, come here. You can't go forward, girl. Okay. Do you see what I mean about chaos sometimes? Bailey's. Come on. Come on, Bailey's. Want to say hi to everybody, Bailey's? Come on. No. Okay. She is going to need her collar today because she it's going to run and be difficult. Uh, I think she knows what's coming. So, come on, you ready to go back in? Ready? Let me get it on the hook. No, 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 no. Go on, baby. Go on. Oh. Goats can be very stubborn and very trying. So, if you think you want to get goats, you need to have some patience. You also need to understand that unless you want to do what I used to do and spend hours a day in your barn cleaning every cobweb, using kitty litter scoops to pick up poop, I literally did that. Your barn is not going to be perfect. It's the nature of the beast. Okay, guys, I'm going to open this up so the turkeys and ducks can come out. Um, the turkeys and ducks eat a higher protein, different food than our chickens. That's made more for them. So we still keep them separated, but only at night. Um, 
they single file out usually. Uh, we always have one. We always have one. One last stray. <laughs> Go on, turkey. Okay. We always have chickens in the nest boxes. I'm going to see if I can turn this around. Okay, guys, I'm sorry about the camera holder showing on part of this. It just is what it is. Um, like I said, we always have... We always have things happening in here. Um, so they're fixing to go outside, and I'm going to stop this and turn it back the other way. Okay, maybe I could do it like that, and that's less uh, invasive. I always have to take the feed buckets away, because if I don't, the goats will eat the feed, and that is not a good thing. Um... I do keep my barn locked at night. The reason is predators. Um, we've actually lost the padlock that goes up here, which was a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, it fell out, and probably when we do some cleaning, we will find it. So, here goes the rush. That was a flying turkey. People say turkeys can't fly. I say, ha, ha. Yes, they sure can. Oh, there's another turkey. That's Tom. No, that's my hen. I'm sorry. That's my hen. That's Tom out there. And the other one is a Tom. Here comes Bailey's. Okay, so I'm going to go down here. This is a duck egg. Um, hi, Chops. Hi. Fernadan has chosen not to come and join us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and collect the, some of the duck eggs. Um, I mean, chicken eggs. I'm sorry. Still thinking about the ducks. I've got two more duck eggs to collect out of their actual stall. Um, Okay, so I wanted to show you, I have three duck eggs. They are the ones that are really, really dirty. Because, again, they lay on the ground. And we did use some of the pelletized bedding for the ducks, thinking because they're so messy, it would absorb more. This is the milk that I collected. And, again, that is a one-gallon bucket. And this is the bedding that we used that is not working out as well as I thought it would. Um, I know they're in a small area. It just, I thought it would dry out a lot faster and it really seems to hold the moisture. Probably because like I said, ducks are so messy and they're always splashing around and playing in their water. Okay, so I'm in the house and did I not grab that box? I did not grab that box. Okay, these are milk filters. I have two of them here. Um, they are Kinag brand. We used to get them at Tractor Supply. I have to order on Amazon now. The first step that I'm going to do, I have already put one cup of water in my Instant Pot down here. This black silicon thing is I used for pressure canning to keep the pots off the bottom of the pressure canner to help prevent breakage and so forth. Okay, so I have smashed these filters into this canning strainer, and now I am going to filter my milk. Now, you may be wondering, why do you filter milk? Well, even though none of the goats stepped in the bucket, I still end up with some goat hairs that might fall off the underside of their body or little specks of dust or dirt, leaves. You know, goats do have things up on the underside of their body that you might not think about and that can fall into the milk bucket. I also lightly pasteurize because after doing all of my research, we have decided this is our 
level of comfort. Now, if you don't do this, that's fine. That is your choice. Okay, so what I wanna show you here, can you guys see all the hair and stuff that is on this filter? That is exactly why I filter the milk. And even if I was gonna drink it raw, that's what I would do. This is a three quart pot and you can see how full it is. So now I'm going to put my lid on, I'm going to plug my Instant Pot in. It is set on steam, one minute, no pressure, no delay, and I am going to turn keep warm off, and then I'm going to start it. And that's how we're gonna pasteurize the milk. I'm gonna take this bucket and this strainer over and I am going to rinse them out with cold water. Okay, so the next step for me was to remove the inner pot from the Instant Pot. And it's not really hot because like I said, I only did it for one minute. Um, I'm going to dump that milk up here into the top of my cream separator and we are going to have a little bit of noise put the instant pot back here i have a canning jar over here to catch the cream we're going to plug it in the milk is held up in the top of this unit let me see if i can the milk is held in the top of the unit um i did not want i did not open it up yet so i'm going to focus back down here i'm going to turn this on let it run for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to open up this bigger pot and watch the magic happen. This is the milk. Oh. I don't have this super tight. There we go. I'm going to have to hold it down a little bit. I did not get it super tight. This is the cream. There's a gasket up in the top of this. And I obviously did not get that as tight as what I should have. It's a little bit tricky to get it in there just perfect. And I do have a... I do have my adjustment set to get a little bit more cream because I like to make butter and I like a little bit of extra milk in my cream so that I don't have to add any. It does thicken and work just fine once it's chilled and refrigerated. It does take a few minutes, um, so what I'm going to do is after everything is processed with the cream separator, I pour the milk into canning jars that I fill about halfway full. Um, I may have to fill a little bit fuller, they're pint canning jars, and I refrigerate everything including the cream for 30 minutes, and then everything gets moved into the refrigerator. During that 30 minute time frame, I am washing up all my milking equipment. Like I said, I instantly rinse it all in cold water. And then I set it over on the other side of the sink because it will need to be processed. Um, we're down at the point with this where it's not necessarily gonna be able to suck the rest of it through. So when that happens, I just lift the bowl, bowl and pour what's left. The reason I rinse all of my milking equipment right away with cold water is so that there is no milk, spoiled milk smell or anything like that in any of my equipment. So like I said, the last step is dividing this milk down into smaller containers and then putting everything in the freezer for that half hour. 
And then I also have to take my cream separator completely apart, including the discs that are down under here that you guys aren't seeing. Um, we get a lot of cream and stuff stuck to those, and that is just discard. So that's my milking process. Okay, so I ended up with nine little pints plus the cream. This is ice cream that I made with gold, goat's milk. This is the top of my freezer. I will close this up and set my timer for 30 minutes. Okay, so I thought I'd show you this. This is that piece inside that I told you about. I have a Vivor cream separator. It came with this special tool to get all of this apart and I want to show you this is after one use just what you saw okay as we take this apart do you see all that inside of there okay that is not the only thing all of these little discs I'm gonna have to lift that up all of these little discs have milk and then there is something down under here that also has some milk and cream remnants and each one of these has to be individually washed but like I said my first step is to keep these pieces completely separate my first step is to go through here and see how that's really just thick and kind of yuck I rinse all of this milk off um, I do have a specialty brush for getting cracks and crevices out. And get all of this rinse. And that's the first step before I even start washing any of this down. Um, it's just, there was a lot of cream and stuff today. So this is actually in a little worse shape than what it normally is. My process to keep all of these discs in the right order is to rinse them off and then I turn them upside down in my sink. And then when I wash them, I start from the bottom so that I can put them back on this bar here that I don't know if you can see. But that keeps them from getting mixed up and keeps everything pretty organized and easy to clean. Um, they do have to be dried by hand. You cannot use a dishwasher with any of these parts. This is all hand washing. I feel like there's going to be a lot of questions here, like why would you go through all that work and can't you just do it all in a big batch after you're done with all your milking? It actually, the cream does not separate right with the milk cold. We did try that um, to try to eliminate a step of the process. It did not work. It works a lot better after the milk has been pasteurized because I've also tried before pasteurization. And I feel like after it's pasteurized, it just absolutely goes through this machine and works better. Now, why go through all this work? Well, here are my thoughts. Unless you're a breeder, which we are not. We do breed to get milk production for us not because we're trying to have a certain bloodline or anything like that. So my thinking is, well, you got goats. What did you get the goats for? You probably got the goats so you could have your own dairy. And this goes for cows too, uh, or any other milk animal, because I know people milk sheep and donkeys and all kinds of things. If you've got the animal, first of all, I feed organic because whatever they eat is going to affect the quality of their milk. And if I wanted chemicals and GMOs and all that stuff, I guess I'd just go to the store and buy milk. But that's not what I want. I want to know what my animals are feeding. 
I want to know that my animals are healthy. You know, I don't want to deal with the recalls and so forth that often happen in the grocery store. And because I'm buying hay, I'm buying treats, I'm buying feed, I'm having vet bills because they have had fecals and stuff checked, you know, once a year. I'm having all of these extra expenses that are associated with owning livestock. Plus, I'm spending the time out of my day to milk. Why would I not utilize every single part of the milk? That's why the cream separator. If you haven't priced butter at the store, you might be in for a bit of a shock. Organic milk at the store is almost $7 a gallon. I cannot have conventional milk. So if we have to buy it, we buy the organic. Um, thankfully this year we probably will not have to buy milk because I'm telling you these goats are just absolutely performing wonderfully. This is the little thing that I was talking about that goes on the bottom of this. Um, so when I have goat milk and goats and milk, the decision that was made many years ago when I first got goats when Jerry was alive was that I would learn how to make cheese and butter and all the things that I could do with the goat milk to offset the cost and the time involved in raising goats. Now, everybody's different and you have to do the decision that is obviously right for your family. And I understand that not everybody wants to feed organically. Maybe not everybody wants to invest in the equipment um, the Vivor cream separator, which is the one I have, was $118 on Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate, meaning that when people click on those links on my YouTube or on my websites, I get a commission and I chose to get gift cards. Um, that has been okay with both Jeff and Jerry because we have talked about it. And I have explained to them that that gives me an opportunity to buy things that I might want or need that we would not take out of the budget. I've waited 20 years for my cream separator. Um, I know $118 is not the end of the world, but it just, you know, we have bills. And we have an old house, and there are lots of fix or repair dailies here. <laughs> um, that is no joke, guys. Um, I know I'm making light of that, but that is really no joke. Um, there is always, always something happening here. Uh, we've had electrical done. We've had multiple roofs put on. We are hoping someday to get around to the plumbing. We have areas of the house that have been worked on and just the drywall needs mudded and then dried and painted. And we are still working on some of the electrical for some of the upstairs rooms. I do not have an overhead electrical light for my dining room. We have a plug-in. Uh, light from the 60s or 70s, which is fine. Uh, no complaints about that. But over our dining room table, we have a kerosene lamp from the 1800s, a hanging lamp. And if we are doing anything in the dining room at night, that's the lighting that we have. Um, again, that's not a complaint. It just... When you buy an old house, it really does take an awful lot of work and money to stay on top of things. And, you know, Jerry and I lived here 10 years before he passed away from cancer unexpectedly. We didn't get everything done. Jeff has been here a little over 10 years at this point. We don't have everything done. 
I don't know in our lifetime if we ever will. Um, it may be up to the next person that owns this house. You know, like I said, I have cobwebs in my barn. I have paint that needs scraped because it's peeling. It's not lead paint. I know that. I, I painted it, and I guess I didn't get the ceilings prepped very well. So it's modern paint and everything, but it needs scraped off and repainted. Like I said, lots of changes and lots of things have happened. And now we're in my laundry room. This is my third load of laundry today. Um, we have kittens and cats. And we have one cat that has real attitude. So we had to change all the bed sheets. And then this is just my regular towels that I use for milking and our clothes, which is just our regular load. Um, after getting the dishes done, I actually don't even know what that goes to, but I better throw it in there anyway. Um, after getting the dishes done for milking, I had nine minutes left on the milk cooling. So I decided that I would run down here and try to get this washer load of clothes into the dryer so that I can get one more thing off of my list. And for those who are wondering, no, this is still a room that we are working on trying to get together and it still has a long ways to go. I have six minutes left and I feel like this video has drug on forever. So I'm not going to show you any more of what I'm doing today. I will be moving the cream into the cream container. I will be dumping all of the milk into larger mason jars. I will be going outside to give the ducks fresh water in their duck pond, give the pigs fresh water in their piggy bath trough, giving fresh water to the goats and the pigs in their drinking troughs, coming back inside and folding that laundry. And I have a lot of canning to do today. Um, because I did not get it done yesterday. I have turkey broth and turkey to deal with. And probably should try to head back to work to deliver some groceries at some point. I would really like to get um, a few more trees cut down and a little bit more mowing done. But as you can see, all of this takes a lot of time and a lot of work and that's just that's where we're at and i felt like instead of continuing to have everybody show the glamour side of homesteading that i needed to show you what it's really really like i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you will subscribe thanks for watching and have a fantastic day